Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you a very very weird but really really cool way of awaiting multiple tasks in C-Sharp in parallel. Now, this is not your traditional approach to solving that issue. We won't just use a task dot when all. Instead, we're going to use some new C-Sharp features or relatively new and some pretty advanced .NET techniques to achieve this in a way that it writes, in my opinion anyway, way way better. If you like the of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so let me show what I have here. I have a simple console application and I have a weather service over here that just generates a bunch of fake weather forecasts. So you pass down a city that isn't really used and then we have a fake delay for two seconds and then we generate five weather forecasts. If you made any .NET API ever, that part is part of the template of that project. Now to showcase what I'm trying to do, I'm just going to use a program.cs. Now I have this weather service as a new instance over here and what I want to do is I want to make a call to that weather service, which imagine is an external API that gives me back the weather, but I want to get the weather for two independent cities on the same request because maybe when I open my iPhone or my phone and I go to the weather app, I want to see both long London and Paris, for example. Well, if I wanted to get the London weather, what I would do is I would say service.getWeather for London. And if I wanted to get the weather for Paris, I would say await service.getWeather for Paris. Now, here's the interesting thing about these tasks. They don't need to happen sequentially because the weather in London is one thing and the weather in Paris is another thing. And there's no reason to have them in a specific order. For example, London can come after Paris and this would still just work. Now here I'm using await and there is an await async process, but this is still a sequential operation, meaning that Paris weather has to come back first before London weather can actually execute and a request goes there and we get the weather back. Just to give you an idea of what's happening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say console.writeline over here and I'm going to say time provider dot system dot get local now just to get the time and print it in the console. So I'm going to have my two requests that are going to get the weather forecast. I'm going to run it. And as you're going to see, I'm going to run this. And first I'm going to get one minute past seven and five seconds. And here one minute past seven and nine seconds. That's because each method over here has a two seconds fake delay. That's why the two calls will be four seconds apart. But this will make my request double the time it could be because those requests could be parallelized. Now the way I can do this in C Sharp is as follows. I can say, var weathers or weather forecasts. Well, I just want to say weathers. Why not? And I'm going to say await task dot when all and I can pass the two requests. First, I'm going to go with London and then I'm going to go with Paris over here. Here we go. And what this is going to do, let me just quickly break it down for you so you can see it better. What this is going to do is going to call these two things asynchronously, but at the same time. So if I was to go ahead and say run now, take a look at what happens to the time. 15 seconds, 17 seconds. So those two requests happen in parallel, but also asynchronously. Now there's a whole different topic in terms of what's going on behind the when all method. And that's maybe a video for another time. And also as a side note, if you want to do this the proper way, because there is a bit of an issue with exceptions when you do this in C sharp, then you probably want to use the task extension dot when all which exists inside this task ext.cs file which you can grab by downloading the source code from down below now there's really nothing wrong with just doing this but the developer experience i want is to actually remove this task dot when all thing because wouldn't it be really cool if you could just do this where you just say await then parentheses and then have your two tasks task one and task two and i think that this reads way way better however how would you do this well to understand how you would do this you have to understand what's happening here because the problem isn't this the parentheses the problem is the awaiting part now before i move on i'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on dom train called from zero to hero empty framework in that course our new author hannes lawett will take you into an eight hour journey learning everything there is to learn about NT Framework. And this course is actually two courses into one. We did think of releasing them as two separate courses, but it makes more sense for your experience to be one massive one. Hannes is an excellent teacher who has been teaching NT Framework for years. He does conference talks, workshops. He's just amazing. And I know him personally. He was one of my very first handpicked authors for Dome Train, and he knocked it out of the park with this one. There is no better NT Framework resource out there right now, all up to date with everything you need to know all the way up to .NET 
Fortnite 8. Now, as always, to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount code. So use the link in the description and don't wait for Black Friday because this course will be excluded on Black Friday. So 20% will be the max you can get. All right, enough with that. Now back to the video. You see the actual type of what's happening here. If I quickly remove the await and I say, show me the actual type, is that this is a tuple that in my case has my type and it has a tuple of this task and a tuple with parameter this task. If I just revert to a variable and I put the await back, the question I want to ask is how do I make something awaitable? And the answer is a technique I've actually shown in the past because you can turn anything into something awaitable. I can turn a string into something awaitable if I want to. How do I do that? Well, by creating an awaiter for it. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go here and create a new class. I'm going to call that task extensions over here and I'm going to turn this into static because everything will be static methods in here. Then I'm going to ask what do I want to add an awaiter on? What do I want to await? Well I want to await a task of type t and the task of type t. So what I'm going to do is going to say public static and I'm going to return a task awaiter over here. This struct that you probably haven't seen before and then and the name is very important I'm going to say get awaiter as the name of this method. This is very, very important for the compiler to do its magic. And then I'm going to say that this is an extension on a tuple of task of type T and a task of type T. Now, in this case, both tasks have the same type, so I'm going to use that as an interface, which means that if I want to be consistent with how when all works, this should return an array of t's because that's exactly what the type of the task dot when all will be if we use that. Now I'm just gonna call this tasks tuple. Now for this to work, I'm also gonna pass down the t generic type parameter. And what I need to return back is an awaiter. And the awaiter I need is the when all because I want to have the same experience as the when all method. So I'm gonna say tasks tuple dot item one and then tasks tuple dot item to, and I'm going to say get a waiter, the get a waiter method of the when all task. Now, like I said, I'm going to use the task extension version because I want to be very careful with how I'm handling my exceptions, but the interface doesn't really change. So this all compiles. So once I have that and I go back to program.cs, as you can see now, I have an awaitable tuple that returns a weather forecast. Just to debug this to see exactly what's going on, I'm going to put a breakpoint here, say debug, and then I'm going to go to weathers and I'm going to wait for one, two, and that's it, we're back. And as you can see, I have both weathers in an array. And those two happened in parallel asynchronously. And now I added this experience to my C sharp. Of course, this means that if you wanna do this for three, four, five, or six generic type parameters, then you would have to create n amount of these methods. For example, if you wanna do it for three, you'd have to have three tasks over here, and then you'd have to have item one, item two, item three, and this would allow you to have it for three methods, but that's something you can adjust as you need it. The other thing I want to mention is that if you don't want to return an array here, but instead you want to return a tuple as you're sending the parameters in, so for example, have something like this, var, London, and Paris, then if you want to do that, you have to go back here and you'd have to change this a bit, where you're going to do something like this. You say async task, and that is a task combiner, so you combine the tasks in here. So let's go ahead and destructure them with task one and task two. Then we can have our await call. So we can say when all in the same way as before, task one and then task two. And again, I'm going to change it to the task extensions. And then in the end, we say return task one dot result and task two dot result. Do not be scared that we're doing dot result here. This is intentional because they're guaranteed to have computed and have finished their asynchronous functionality. So we actually have the result computed in the property already. And then all you need to do in the end is say combine tasks dot get a waiter. Now, of course, this does mean we have to change this to return a triple over here. But once we do that, we have that we can go back here. And as you can see, now we have the London weather and the Paris weather. And as the properties go in, that's the way they come out because we said task one and task two. And again, if you need an amount of these in a series, then you'd have to create an amount of methods. I think this approach is really, really cool and I really, really like it, but I really, really know what you think. So go down in the comments and tell me if that's something you would use. Well, that's all I had for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.